This is EE 2070, week two, lecture one. So today, we're going to wrap up. Actually, we already wrapped up. We're going to look at series resonance uh, examples, and we're going to look at also an ex examples of general resonance. That is utilizing the definition that, uh, so before that, uh, note for the students in 2070 that your homework one is due next class. Okay. So at the start of class, uh, recall that the definition of resonance, and for this purposes, we were using a series RLC circuit. So Z bar at omega equals omega naught is purely real, and this is the definition of resonance. So we found out that omega naught for the series circuit is one over square root of LC, the resonance frequency, but it's also called as a natural frequency, uh, radians per second. That's the first quantity we defined. Yeah. And again, all of these pops up from the fact that at resonance, the impedance of our circuit is purely real. Uh, then point number two is the half power frequencies are defined as omega two is one half the power at resonance and the power at resonance is maximized. This implied that omega one is minus r over two l plus square root of r over two l the whole squared plus one over LC and omega two is simply R over two L whole square root of R over two L the whole squared one over LC. And for those of you who are familiar with time constants, you have to I mean you gotta always check units, but it's easy to check that check that the units of one over LC are seconds one over second squared and to the time constant is L over R. So this basically you're getting second squared here, the square root is seconds. Okay um sorry it's one over second squared, uh, one over second squared, it's one over seconds, there's also one over second, so you do get radians per second, that's, that's my whole point. So always check the dimensions, and omega naught is, you can easily verify, it's the geometric uh, mean of omega one, omega two. We also define the bandwidth as or the half power band is omega two minus omega one, which is R over L. Now the final quantity, very important quantity is Q, which is omega naught L over R, which is one over omega naught RC. And recall that Q or the quality factor, which is dimensionless, was defined as two pi times peak energy stored in circuit divided by uh, the energy dissipated at resonance in one period. Okay. So again, that's the definition. So let me just throw this on the desktop, the file. So let's do some example problem or an example problem which is pro practice problem 14.7. So the question is, here is a series resonance circuit, uh, 25 millihenry and R is four ohms. Uh, this is C, so part A is find value of C if the quality factor should be 50 and the solution is pretty simple in the sense that, you know, omega naught, it's a series RLC circuit, so it's one over square root of LC, and Q equals omega naught, you can use any form, let's use L over R. Uh, this therefore, Q equals one over square root of LC, oops, yeah, no, so we can use this, L over R, we do have a C in there. This implies, that 
uh, let's see, multiply under by square root of L. So square root of C is square root of L over R uh, times 1 over Q. Therefore, the capacitance is, uh, let's see, where did I do that? That's wrong. So it's simply square root of L over R. Uh, square root of L over R times 1 over Q. So C is square root of L over R Q. The whole squared, this implies C is, let's see, let's just plug in the numbers. So L is 25 millihenry. I'm ripping out my calculator here. Actually, wait a minute. I have the calculator on my desktop. So let me fire that up. Uh, where is a TI emulator? So let's do this. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, second square root of 0 0.025, 25 millihenry, divided by R is 4 ohms times 50. So if you approximate that, uh, 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 oh, the whole square, never mind. So then let's just square this. So basically C is point. oops, six to five microfarads and I believe this is the answer in the book yes so the book is right okay, that's the answer to part A let's go on to part B he wants us to calculate the half power frequencies and the bandwidth that's easy to do omega is minus r over 2l plus square root of r over 2l the whole squared plus 1 over lc so if you plug in all the numbers, omega 1 is going to be, let's see, negative 4 over 2 times 0 0.025 plus second square root of 4 divided by 2 times 0 0.025 squared plus 1 divided by um, um, L is 0 0.025 times 0.625 microfarads. Uh, let's see. So I basically get 7920 radians per second. Um, now that's the answer in the back of the book. Uh, let's see. Actually, uh, let me just fix this precedence here in the sense I want to be sure that the precedence here is correct. Yeah, 7920.4, because basically I want to make sure it's 4 divided by 2 times 0 0.025. So let's fix this uh, 0.4 radians per second. Okay, that's omega 1. Always box the answers with units where appropriate. And then omega 2 is simply r over 2l. It better be greater than omega 1. It should be. Divide by square root of r over 2l squared plus 1 over lc. This implies omega 2 is, well, let's just take out this negative sign and approximate it. So 8080.4 80, 80. radians per second. And it's very simple to see that the difference, the bandwidth, which is omega 2 minus omega 1, it's a difference of 160. Let's see, 160 plus 7, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's right, radians per second. And this is the answer in the book. And finally, what they're asking is the half powers and uh, one way to do this is defined as one half the power at resonance and we know it's one half times one half v max i max and the circuit is purely resistive at resonance and in the book uh, so it's the maximum voltage is 100 volts so you do that uh, and then you do 100 over 4 so it's the Input voltage divided by the resistance is the current, the loop current. So it's basically uh, 10,000 
or by 16, which implies Ten thousand divided by sixteen is six twenty-five. I should be able to do the calculator watts, okay? And your book has 0 0.625 kilowatts, so it's correct. Uh, note obviously that uh, P R omega equals omega two is also the same as P is equals omega one is six twenty-five watts, and the average power and also so if you want to get boxes as well and power at omega naught is simply twice this so it's 1250 watts so that's the average power resonance but one thing i would like to show you is that there's another way to compute this that is uh, what you can do is we know power at the average power is one half uh, V max I max cosine of theta V minus theta I and this is this serves a good check of your answer and I bar at omega equals omega one now the power factor is not unity anymore because we're not at resonance, but that doesn't matter in the sense we know the input is 100 volts at an angle of zero degrees. We know the impedance. Uh, it's going to be R plus J omega 1L minus 1 over J omega 1C. This implies I bar at omega equals omega 1 is simply, uh, so it's 100 at an angle of zero divided by R is 4 plus j omega was 7920.4 times l is 0 0.025 plus 1 divided by in i times omega is 7920.4 I think it was 0 0.5 last time times 0 0.625 microfarad approximate this it's very nice actually this gives us uh, in standard form 12.5 plus 12.5 J therefore the phasor form is the angle is 45 degrees uh, so this implies that I bar is what's the magnitude so let's look at um, catalog amps and answers 17.67 repeated 17.67 repeated at an angle of 45 degrees amps therefore the average power is simply one half 100 times 17.67 cosine of negative 45 degrees which is cosine of 45 degrees which is 1 over square root of 2 therefore it's going to be simply 50 times answers divide by square root of 2 625 perfect 625 and something else it's not 17.67 repeated so I take it back it's something else whatever so it's approximately this 625 watts so it's a good check okay that's for this problem. Now, let's do another example, which highlights the fact, and there's actually problem 14.43 from the back of your book, and this actually leads to parallel resonance, which we'll talk about next lecture. So the question is, find the resonance frequency of this circuit, and the point is, so let me just write this in. Uh, impedances. This is this circuit is neither series nor parallel so what we have to do is we have to find z bar and impose a condition at z uh, omega equals omega naught this is purely real right so that's a solution to this problem so let's find z bar that is 
the impedance, it's simply going to be 1 over j omega c in parallel with r plus 1 over j omega l, which is going to be uh, z1, z2 over z1 plus z2. So this simply becomes uh, r plus j So if I multiply and divide by, uh, oops, what did I write? This is wrong. What am I writing? So this is these two. I don't know how I got 1 over j omega l. Sorry about that. So now this becomes r plus j omega l. So it becomes, uh, let's see, 1 plus r plus j omega l times j omega c okay and this is equal if I multiply this out you get uh, let's see 1 minus omega squared LC plus j omega RC okay And this equal, so now to write this in standard form, I multiply and divide by the conju um, complex conjugate of the bottom, which is simply that. And then the bottom, you get the square of the real part plus the square of the imaginary part, okay? But what we need from here is simply we want to impose that so impose the condition that the imaginary part of one is zero because you want it to be purely real. The imaginary part of one is pretty easy to find out in the sense you get a j omega r squared c from here, and in this case you get uh, so I claim that the imaginary part of this is omega r squared c uh, plus omega l. So this is at omega equals omega naught at resonance, uh, omega L times 1 minus, uh, 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 oh, there's a negative sign floating around, got to be careful. So the imaginary part of this is going to be this times this with the negative sign, and then this times this, the negative sign's fine in there, omega squared LC equals 0, and this is omega equals omega naught. This implies omega naught r squared c plus oops, equals omega naught l times 1 minus omega naught squared lc. So this cancels, that's nice. So basically, what we get at the end is let's see. So you have r squared c equals l minus omega naught squared l squared c. Uh, therefore, uh, so this implies that omega naught squared l squared c is l minus r squared c. This implies omega naught is going to be square root of L minus, now the reason why I want to write like this, and you will see why, RC over L squared C. And you can see this is not an elegant expression uh, like 1 over square root of LC. However, something very important, how do you even check this answer? Uh, note, well, check units, okay? So on the left-hand side, so the units of RC is time constant, okay? Uh, so let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do this. So you know that the right-hand side is going to be square root. I'm going to factor out an R. I'm going to get L over R minus RC divided by L times LC, okay? So what is this going to be? So 
therefore the dimensions of right hand side is the square root of the dimensions of this RC is seconds L over R is also seconds so this is going to be seconds in the numerator divided by so if I multiply by 1 over R I get uh, L over R in the denominator right so I get seconds here and then the dimensions of LC as you can recall are seconds squared so this is 1 over second which is good checks out okay and uh, that's about the only check you can do for this but it's a very important check which you should do especially if you have a circuit that is not a standard series parallel circuit so they do have resonance frequencies like we talked about in lecture last week in the sense the definition of resonance is the impedance looking at the terminals of interest is purely real that's about it for this lecture i'm sorry i went over the 20 minute time but like i said i anywhere from 20 to 23 minutes for every lecture okay so next time what we're going to do is we're going to talk about parallel parallel ah, resonance see you then